things which are coming on the earth. For the powers of heaven shall be shaken. And then shall they see the Son of Man coming in a cloud with power and great glory. And when all these things begin, and when all these things begin and come to pass, then look up and lift up your heads, for your redemption draweth nigh. You may be seated this morning. Amen. If I could preach, I hardly ever tired of a message. But if I could preach this morning, I'd preach on the thought you've got to unload before you go up. That's it. You've got to unload before you go up. And and uh, uh, Jesus made mention here of the conditions of the world. And uh, we're in a bad, bad condition. Right. Uh, uh, Presently and have been for years, but I, I believe that you look back through history as I have and and read back through There's never been a time quite like this time right. and uh, I even read last week that the Pope was getting in uh, uh, on some of the the uh, one of the saber rattling and stuff that's going on between the nations and, and trying to get in and calm the world down over this North Korea deal. The Pope's even getting involved at it. The world wants prosperity. Right. That's what they want. Right. Right. Uh, they don't want war. War's coming. It'll always be wars and rumors of wars until Jesus returns. So war's coming and they go. But the world wants prosperity. They want peace and safety. Amen. But we know the scripture declares sudden destruction's coming. Amen. But Jesus said, look up. Look up. Right. While we're looking up, then that means we're not going to get caught up in this world system. That's right. Are you helping me preach? Come on. Amen. We was, uh, we was visiting those folks that we spend the night with and, and, uh, I think he said he was 50 years old and had been in the business that they had been in for 25 years and uh, uh, accumulated a lot of debt, a lot of debt when they went into that business 25 years ago. And, and when I, I say this, I'm talking about a lot of debt, astronomical amount of money that they went into to get into that business. In 15 years, they had paid off. And on top of that, you know, they, they, they've, got, they've got eight children and raised their family and, and paid off their debts. And, uh, you know, uh, uh, that, that, that's what, you know, I thought to myself, you know, if I was a young man, again, I'd like to get into that, you know. And you're tempted when you're old. <laughs> Amen. But, but, uh, but uh, 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 the thing that, that I need to get in, and I really think that, we all need to get motivated here today with is to look up. Right. Jesus is coming, church. Yes, he is. How, you know, uh, when we take those times and we feel bad and pressures are coming, then, then, then it's easy to push it back on the back burner. Mm -hmm. But look up. Right. Sister Kathy was talking about prayer this morning, and I woke up about a quarter after three, and I thought, well, I'll get up. And I thought, no, it's just a little early. And if I, 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 maybe, maybe I'll wake up at four. I usually always do. And uh, but uh, I, 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 I thought, well, the enemy just come right in, right in. You ever have him do you that one? Absolutely. Come on. Don't do any good. Come on. Go ahead, pray. You're not getting any answers. Come on. Yeah. Come on. And I went back to sleep at quarter after three. Come on. Four o'clock, just as sure as I'm standing here, something woke me up. Now, it was probably, I took my apnea machine off, and God knows how to use those things to our benefit. Right, I probably quit breathing, and then I wake up, you know, uh, when you start breathing all of a sudden, and, and uh, uh, but whatever. I woke up 
And I looked and that clock said four o'clock, four zero zero, digital clock. And the Lord just dealt with me. I woke you up right. to let you know I'm still around yeah. and I am a moving. Uh -huh. Even though the devil says that I'm not, I'm still a moving. Right. And the thing that we got to do this morning, church, is to look up. Right. Right. Look up, as Jesus said. Yeah. Hallelujah. We're too near home to lay down the cross. Yes, oh, I'd like to yes, preach this morning. Yes. Amen. Hallelujah. At the sound of the trumpet, we've got to be free of the things in this world to be able to rise up and meet Jesus in the air. Right. And I'll Amen. say this here, and I've said it a thousand times, and I've said it once, and I'll say it other places. It's going to take more than just one prayer. It's going to take more than getting your name on the church book. It's going to take more than just being baptized. Amen. If you're going to have to be free from the things of this world, your heart's going to have to be free. You're going to have to know that you're saved if you're going to go back with God. Right. right. Hallelujah. Right. 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 I'm going to talk like this just a minute anyway. Hey, we got to unload before we go up. Yes. Right. Amen. 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 We got to unload. We got to be able to subdue our passions. I don't care who you are. You've got passions. Yes, sir. Oh, God. I remember one time I was in a place preaching, and there was a whole lot of hugging going on. And I, I really don't want to get into this. Everybody bends kind of gets into things from time to time, you know, showing, expressing your appreciation to people. And, and I've got family that I haven't seen in a long time. And, and we'll see them at, at, at uh, family reunion and, and, and they'll run up and hug you, uh, whether they're a, a woman or a man. And sometimes we run into friends that we haven't seen for a long time and they'll go ahead and hug you. And, and my wife's family, are more huggy than mine are. And and, and so, you know, uh, uh, I'm not uh, uh, saying anything negative about that. Right. But right. but uh, but I went into a church one time and they was extremely huggy. Uh -huh. And uh, just hugging all over everybody and men and women. And I really, really uh, didn't like it much. And I even made a point to say something about it. Uh, uh, even if they had cut the preaching off, I still said something about it. And then one old sister that was way up in her 70s and she saw I didn't like it. And I really think she'd done it to stir up trouble because her husband was a right smart older than her. And when the preacher come by and hugged her, then she started yakking about it, you know, because she stir up trouble. And she said, well, she said, it just stirs up passions. And I'm telling you, I thought that old man was going to lose his mind, you know. Amen. Uh, whenever he was jealousy. Can you help me preach here a few minutes? I feel like talking to us. Amen. Paul said in 1 Corinthians 9 and 22, But I keep under my body and bring it under subjection, lest by any means when I preach to others, I myself should become a castaway. Paul realized that his passions had to be subdued. Right. Not just passions for the opposite sex, but passions for things of this world. Right. Yeah, Amen. Things that we have a desire oh, to yeah. go after and to, and, to, and to have those things more than we want God. Right. I'm like a right. preacher's boy. Yeah. Amen. Hallelujah. Oh, and I'm going to tell us those passions as they arise. Amen. I've said this before. And, and uh, you know, I, 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 I like what the Lord's blessed me with. I mean, I got no problem with it. Uh, I, I'd like to have, uh, a, a, you know, more property, even though I don't need it. And uh, uh, the older I get, at least I'm not living somewhere like I did when I lived over at Urban, that I had to spend about two hours weed eating every week with a, with a string trimmer uh, to keep my yard mowed. Uh, I don't have to do that anymore. And, uh, uh, you know, then you'd like to have, as you look around and, and you have your, your automobile, 
automobile preferences and I look around and I thought, boy, if I had one of those, I was driving down the road the other day, me and Brother Raymond was going to the hospital and I was driving the old truck that I got out here and we passed the Ford garage and I said, buddy, I said, I'd almost trade this thing even, just joking around to one of them big trucks over there. And Raymond said, yeah, yeah, probably would. Hey man, if you twisted your arm enough, you know, and, and we just make, you know, we look at things like that. After a while, if we just keep looking, we start getting a passion for it. That's right. That's right. Are you helping us? Things that we really can't afford to have, right. things that we really don't even need, we start getting a passion for those things. We've got to bring those under subjection right. and subdue them, amen, to where God is first in our life. Right. Hallelujah. Yes. And if God's not first, bring that passion under subjection. Hallelujah. Bring it under subjection where we can unload before we go up. Right. Hallelujah. Jesus realized, after he realized his mission here, and I, I believe he realized that mission by the time he was 12 years old, whenever he told his mother, that, that it was time for him to be about his father's business, but it wasn't. She took him back home, and he stayed in subjection for 18 years. Uh, being about 30 years old, whenever he went out to minister, uh, to do his ministry. But Philippians chapter 2, verse 8, Paul said, And being in form, being found in fashion as a man, he humbled himself and, being, and became obedient unto death, even the death of the cross. He realized to be able to do the will of God, he had to unload from himself. Right. Yeah. Come on. Hallelujah. Come on. Well, it's just a little bit preaching, different preaching this morning. Uh, he had to unload from himself. And then a scripture that I've read and preached on numerous times, Luke 9, 23 and 24, and he said unto them all, If any man will come after me, let him just deny himself, take up his cross daily, and follow me. And whosoever will save his life shall lose it. And whosoever will lose his life, uh, 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 for my sake he shall save it. And Apostle Paul said to the Corinthians, I die daily. There was a constant danger. Amen. And Paul's life, constant suffering. Constant persecution. Amen. And sure, he just like anybody else, he would like to rise above that. Sometimes we run into people that we went to school with. Yeah, you younger folks, there's even people still alive that I went to school with. Right. Amen. And we run into people that we went to school with. Some of them haven't prospered very good. Some of them have prospered and made a lot of money. Amen. And, and, and then I run into preachers that started preaching about the same time I did. Some of them prospered. And some of them prospered way better than what I've ever thought about prospering. Have tremendous ministries. Amen. But when I stop to look at it, brothers, I really have nothing to be ashamed of. You don't have anything to be ashamed of. If you put God first in your life, then He's got you right where you need to be today. And if you haven't put God first, then God's expecting that out of you. Amen. Because you've got to unload before you go up. That's right. Now, I'm gonna, not going to preach a long time this morning. But Jesus said in Matthew 11 to 28, Come unto me all ye that labor and are laden, heavy laden, and I'll give you rest. Take my yoke upon you and learn of me, for I am meek and lowly at heart. And I will find rest for your souls. For my yoke is easy and my burden is light. Jesus said, come unto me and unload. Right. Yes. Try. Now a lot of us are, a lot of people are going at it the wrong way. Mm -hmm. They're trying to get unloaded the wrong way. Right. Come on. Amen. I remember and I recall just since I've been sitting here. And I've looked for the book. And, and, and I can't find it, and it's, you know, I'm not looking for the first printing, but I'm not looking for something that's been watered down. The old Huck Finn book. Remember Huckleberry Finn? Hey, man, Tom Sawyer? Uh -huh. I got the Tom Sawyer book, 
but I don't have the Huck fan book. And and after Tom and, and Huck, uh, I found all that treasure, you know, and got rich. And uh, the Widow Douglas took old Huck in and was going to make a better boy out of him. I don't know if you've ever read that or not, but she's going to make a better boy out of him. And she took him to church. <coughs> Amen. But Huck never got saved. He just went to church. Huck didn't like to go to church. He didn't like, you know, he'd always, his daddy was just a, an old drunk and he'd always just lived and done the best he could with what he had. And he didn't like to go to church. Amen. But now he was rich. And Will Douglas had his part of the money. And, and uh, 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 Judge Thatcher, I believe, it, I almost remember things. Amen. Had, 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 had given her power of attorney over his money. Amen. And now, now uh, uh, he was going to be a better boy. She put clean clothes on him yeah. and uh, took his pipe away from him and uh, didn't allow him to cuss in the house or told him he better not be doing it anywhere. Yeah. Amen. And then I read on in the book that he got so tired of doing that that he took all his clothes off and, 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 and hid them somewhere and he told his buddy about it, old uh, Tom about it. He said, and I got my pipe and, and I found me some tobacco. And he said, I went out and, and found me a place where nobody was at. And he said, I smoked that pipe and I cussed to my heart's content. Amen. Why did he do that? Because they was trying to change him and he was not changed on the inside. I'm here to tell us that's what a lot of people are doing today. And I'll say it again. They're joining the church. Amen. And they're being baptized, but they're not being changed. There's things in their life that they're not right. They know they're not right. They're telling things that are not so. And they know they're lying. They're telling mom and dad things. And they know they're telling things that are wrong. They know they're doing things that are wrong. And I'm here to tell you that if death comes by and it seizes you while you're in that condition, you're going to die lost without God. I don't care whose name, what church your name is on their book. You're not going to make it. I feel like preaching to us like this. Come on, this right. You just simply won't make it. Amen. Folks think, well, I won't die young. Amen. Who says you won't die young? Amen. Brother Mitchell was about 15, 16 years old and working over here at Irvin at the convenience store for his uncle. Amen. And some little boy you went to school with had an accident and it killed him. And it busted him up real bad. Yeah. And about that time, I was helping him out some over at the funeral home. Come on. Amen. I'm talking about 16, 17 year old boy. Come on, sir. Yeah. Amen. Had an accident. Busted him up real bad. I went to work over to the funeral home and and, and I talked to the director when I went in, and he younger than me. And uh, but but I, I could see he was tired. And uh, and and I said. Said to him, called him by his name. I said, I said, you're tired. He said, I was up all night long trying to piece that boy's skull back together. Mercy. Amen. Can you help me here a few minutes? And he said, I think I finally got him presentable. Oh. Amen. Just a young boy. Come on. Died in an automobile accident. On, died drunk. Right. Amen. Died without God in his life. Yeah. Amen. Probably, I'm just telling you what I'm probably. When he was just a smaller child, they took him to church. Amen. They convinced him that Jesus Christ was Lord. That's not hard to do to a child, is it? Oh, no. Amen. And do you accept him as your personal Savior? Amen. Yes, I accept him as my personal Savior. Amen. Take him to the water, baptize him, put his name on the church book. He's saved. He's saved for the rest of his life. I'm here talking to somebody here this morning that if you haven't unloaded, you're not ready to go up. But glory to God. Amen. If you haven't got your heart right with God, you're not ready to go. Glory. Glory to God. Come on. Oh, glory to God. Hallelujah. Amen. Those anger outbursts. Outburst of anger. Amen. And just Having your way. Amen. I'm sure Sister Marshall won't mind me 
telling this. She's been in church since she's been a teenager. The Lord changed her and, and, and set her right. But I remember when she said she got 22. <laughs> tell it. You can tell it. Tell me that slogan you had. I'm 22. Don't tell me what to do. Come on now. Amen. I'm 22. Don't tell me what to do. Amen. Oh, yeah. Amen. And you start really putting the pressure on her, and you can start washing her bristle until God got a hold of her. And God dealt with that 22 and don't tell me what to do. Absolutely. Amen. God let her know that regardless of how old she was, that she had to do things God's way. Right. Amen. I'm here to tell you this morning. Amen. I don't care if you're 14, 15, 16, 18, or 20. Right. Amen. You'll not be able to ever do everything that you want to do. Right. Amen. Somewhere in life, you're going to have to bring yourself into subjection right. to something. Oh, yeah. Amen. Hallelujah. Amen. If you want to grow up and be a housewife and never work anywhere, you're going to have to bring yourself in subjection to a husband. Right. And if you're going to do it God's way, you're going to have to do that whether you like it or not. Right. Amen. So it is simply God's way. Right. Hallelujah. Right. Amen. And if you don't want to marry and get a husband, you're going to make your own life for yourself. You're going to have to bring yourself in subjection to a job. Amen. Somebody's going to be a supervisor over you and tell you what to do whether you like it or not. That's right. Come on. Sister Pauline works in the factory and has been working there for a long time. 38, 39 years. 40. 40 years. And she gets up and goes to work. And they got rules there. And if she takes off for a half a day, unexcused absence, it's counted against her unless she uses it for vacation time. If somebody calls on her to sing at a funeral, she has to use vacation time. She has to bring herself under subjection to that, whether she likes it or not, if she wants to work there and have a retirement from there and have a paycheck every week, Amen. Somebody has to tell her what to do. Right. Amen. Hallelujah. And if she's worked there all these years and she knows what the rules are to keep from somebody telling her what to do, she just knows to do it. Right. Amen. Are you helping you here? If we learn God's way and we learn God's book, hallelujah, we don't have to have him, amen, breathing down our shirt collar and having the preacher nail us every time we come to church. Amen. Praise God. We just simply want to do it because we want to go to heaven. We're unloading so we can go up. I'm here to tell somebody this morning, you ain't ready to go up. Hallelujah. Amen. Sometimes we think we're ready, but we're not ready. And I know this won't fly everywhere. And it may not fly here. Amen. But I'm here to tell you, if your heart's not right, you're not going. You're not going. Hallelujah. I was talking in a Bible class. And here I am. Saved. Saved. Lord, forgive me with sins. And I'm sanctifying myself the best I know. But I've got this extremely high temper. And sometimes, well, not just sometimes, the majority of the time when we have this extremely high temper, we take it out on the people that are closest to us. Come on. The people who do the most for us. Come on. Amen. Absolutely. Uh huh. Come on. Oh, black preachers, come a little closer now. Come on. Come a little closer. Yeah. Hallelujah. That's what we do with those high tempers. We take it out on the people who are closest to us and the people who do the most for us. Amen. And as I progress in my Christian experience, amen, and I lose that temper, and I really haven't lost it, I've just simply lost control of it. Amen. Because I still have it. Amen. The problem is, I've got, the thing about it is I've got to get to where I've got control of it. 
that it don't control me. I still have that temper. I'm still a very temperamental man. Amen. My last name is Sparks. And I don't know how Brother Lester is, but it kind of runs among us. Amen. Hallelujah. But, but uh, you know, we, we're very temperamental people. Amen. And, and I realize I've got to get control of that. I can't be losing it every time I get mad about something and take it out on the dearest person to me in my life. I can't do that to be saved. Right. That's right. I said I can't do that to be saved. Come on. I have to unload before I can go up. Amen. Hallelujah. Oh, glory to God. I know I don't talk about this some. Some of you done heard it. But can you bear with me just a little bit longer? Amen. Jesus said, look up. Your redemption draweth nigh. Yeah. Amen. When we're looking up, we're getting our affections off of the things down here and getting our affections on the thing up there. And we know that we got our affections up yonder that we can't be loaded down with too much here. Right. Hallelujah. 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 Come on. Amen. Boy, I looked at a funeral home just playing around. Him and his buddy just playing around. I found out that they had been doing this for several years and had got away with it. Taking a, a pistol the one that's got the cylinder in it. Uh -huh. our life. And putting one bullet in it. Yeah. Right. And spinning that thing. Mm -hmm. And pulling the trigger. Right. Come on. Snap. <laughs> <laughs> Laugh and have a big time. Mm -hmm. Then one day, they got drunk and decided to do it again. Mm -hmm. It's a 38 pistol. Spin that cylinder. Now get your turn. And passed it over to his buddy. Mm -hmm. And he put it up at his temple. And he pulled the trigger. And your brain is like a piece of silk. A bullet won't go all the way through the brain. You hang a piece of silk on a clothesline. And then hang a piece of cotton cloth on a clothesline. And you shoot that cotton, and it'll go through it. But if you shoot that silk, it'll raise it up. And I haven't tried it, but the coroner told me that. And he said that fella shot himself. And, uh, of course, it busted his head all up. And they done an autopsy. And when he went to pick him up, and there his brain was and stuff. They put him back together. Said it was, the brain was all intact. But that bullet blowed his eyeballs plumb out of his head. Sticking plumb out of his head. That's what people are doing. They're playing Russian roulette with their life. Is that how you say it? With a Russian roulette? Is that how you say it? Roulette. Roulette or hell. Anyway, they're playing that with their lives. I'll get right with God after a while. Come on. Oh, God. I'll do better. I'll pray. I'm doing better. And then temptation comes along. Uh -huh. Then they pick it back up again. Right, right. They're doing all the same things again. But one of these days, boom, it's got you. I don't know what I feel like telling these stories. That wasn't part of my message. Oh. I just had a few things written down, and then the Lord just keeps bringing them back to me. Oh, God. I was working there. Still working there. And a little girl, she probably wouldn't have been that high. She was a woman, young woman, that high. Just a little, little thing. Oh, and she was on drugs. Yeah. See, that's what happens to people when they get to messing around with stuff. Right. And just taking a few things at a time. Yeah. Oh, God. After a while, it gets a hold of you. You right. can't let go. Right. right. And she was messing with drugs. And her mother-in-law had a medicine cabinet full of them because she was on everything. Yeah. The doctors had her on everything. She couldn't even hold, give you a sensible uh, conversation. You remember how she was. Amen. And that little girl wanted a pain pill. 
and her mother-in-law wouldn't let her have it. And she went into the den, which was a double wide trailer, and they had a, a couch down there. How in the world they got that thing down there? We had to tear it apart, cut it apart to get it back up the hallway. And she went down there and got on that couch and sat down with a with a pump gun, 12 gauge shotgun. And it was loaded with deer slugs. And she sat down and she was too short to reach the trigger. And so she puts it up next to her chin and she's holding on to the parted pumps. And she takes her toe and reaches and pulls the trigger with that toe and then up under her chin. It blew her head into so many pieces that we picked it up off the floor and scraped it up. I feel like preaching to us a little bit. She couldn't unload. She couldn't unload. She just found herself in a condition that after a while she just kept going and going and going. But practice she couldn't unload. And she thought, she, I'm hooked now. I can't unload. Oh, I'm preaching to somebody here this morning. I, I just can't get unloaded. And, and, and so she goes ahead and kills herself. Uh, when they had her body there in the funeral home and they had it in a bag, I never looked at it again but matter of fact i never saw it at all that part of it but the coroner said there was nothing left but just the nap of her neck that come up everything else was exploded and when that gun went off there was two shots fired and the state trooper told him he's going to call a, a an investigation but state trooper said he'd seen it before and the impact of the gun hitting her and her body coming back forward and her toes still there. She fired the second time unbeknownst and two bullets went through. One went through the window and one went through the roof. Hey Amen. Can you help me just a few more minutes? Oh. There's somebody that couldn't unload. Right. They had been in it so long they couldn't get unloaded. They couldn't get right with God. Oh, God. oh I'll get right with God. And, and, and you know, and, and, they, and, and they give you that impression, I'm saved. I'm saved. Don't you understand? I'm saved. I'm saved. But I'm here to tell you this morning when God has dealt with me on this this week, amen, and moving this with me this morning the way that He has, I'm here to tell you that if you're doing things that are wrong, that you know that are wrong, and that you're having to lie to cover it up, amen, God has got a record of every bit of that, amen, and you're just putting that cylinder on that gun. Amen. You're spinning that cylinder on that gun. On, and you're spinning that cylinder on. on that gun. And you're getting away with it for a while. But there's going to be a day that it's going to go off, friend. Amen. Oh, and when it does, it'll be a sad situation in your life because it's went off. And it's too late for you to get right with God. Come on. Right. Oh, God. Oh, God. Come on. One more story. I went to school with a boy. I was older than him, a year ahead of him. And I forgot now, I'm pretty sure he was, I don't remember, he was one of the oldest, he and his sister. But he was a promising young man. I mean, his dad was into Tennessee walking horses and he had a farm and, and, uh, had a lot of money turning over. Yes. A lot of money turning over. And they bought that boy a sports car. Mm -hmm. And he went up Doe Creek with it. And went down Doe Creek and I'm pretty sure he should have turned it off to go up Barnes Mountain. He went on ahead. And uh, Buck Creek is what they call it, Buck Creek. But somewhere between Doe Creek and Buck Creek there, he ran that sports car out of the road and it killed him. Killed him. He was on drugs. Yeah. He was on drinking. Yeah. He drank it. We didn't know it back in the 70s, late 60s, like that. I met my wife Mary in the 70s. This was the late 60s. We didn't know it. It wasn't as prevalent then that it is now. Uh -huh. People weren't doing it, but all that money turned over yeah. that was going on in that home was drugs. He was the kingpin 
that was bringing them into Estill County and distributed them out. And it killed his boy. Mm -hmm. It killed his boy. Yeah. Years later, when I was working for the funeral home, I went to a little kind of rundown farmhouse yeah. and picked his body up, the daddy. Picked his daddy, picked his body up. Yeah. After he had spent his life Maybe. turning over money, his son got killed. Yeah. He never stopped doing it. But as it played out, and cancer had destroyed his body, yeah. and they took him to the funeral home. And I looked and I thought, well, maybe he's just moved here. But he'd been there a good while. Money was all gone. And his two boys that he had with his last wife were standing there talking to their mother, wondering how we're going to get the money to bury daddy. Sin took him all the way down. Uh -huh. You see, you don't win fooling with it. Right. You don't win fooling no, with you it. You never win fooling with sin. Right. He'll grab you and won't let go of you. Right. Right. Somebody come and get us a song this morning. I didn't mean to preach this long. I really didn't think it was evil. But all of a sudden I feel able because I feel unction. Yeah. Uh -huh. God's dealing with your heart today to get right with God. Right. Now you can dismiss it and say, preacher, you ain't preaching to me. And if you are, and I know you are, and you know I am, I'm not going to respond to this this morning. Oh, God. You're in a dangerous condition. Right. Right. Yes. Come on. That's right. A dangerous condition. This church knows me enough that I don't do this often. Mm -hmm. Until I really feel God deal with me the way he is here today. Uh -huh. You're in a dangerous condition. There's a song Dad used to sing. Way out on the pearliest deep Where dangers solidly creep and storms so violently sweet you're drifting too far from the shore you're drifting too far from the shore you're drifting can you raise your hands and worship the Lord from the Lord come to Jesus today let him show you the way. You're drifting too far from the shore. Are you going to come today? Stand all over the house with me. While somebody is getting a song ready, I'm going to give you an opportunity to come to this altar and find God. I'm not going to ask him, ask you to do like the other churches do. Come forward and We'll say a few words and and then I'll declare you saved and put your name on the church book and give you a water baptism. I'm going to tell you today you need to come to this altar and make your heart right with God. Yes, right. yes, right. Yes. Yes. Get your heart right with God. Yes. A double-minded person is unstable in all of their ways. Yes. God spoke to you this morning. I know He has. I know He spoke to you this morning. And you're not going up until you unload. And you unload right here. Right, right here's where you unload. Right. right here on the altar talking to God and telling Him that you're sorry for your sins. Yes. A lot of people unload when they get caught. Right. And then they cry and right. I've seen it happen until it wears me out. Absolutely. Amen. But I'm here to tell you, 
you can unload today and just say, God, I'm sorry for my sins. And I want to make things right. I want peace in my heart. That's the reason you're going here and doing these all these things that you think's fun right now. Come on. Because you don't have peace in your heart. Come while we're saying this morning. Come. Come right on. This altar is open this morning. Won't you come? Come and make your peace with God today. You pray off conviction and it will work. I've seen it happen. It happens all the time. You need to get right with God.